I, I can't who even wins? see you guys right now. Yeah, let who, me. Who uh, wins? Okay, let me. Let me. Oh, jeez, this is this is bad. All right, you know what? You know what, Brett? You're just gonna go first. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the yes. Sony A7S III and what we want to see in it. Um, you know, I read a report the other day saying that you know it's actually going to be a 12 megapixel sensor and. I don't know how they're going to do that and still get 8K video. Yeah, I read the same report, and um, maybe it's something that they're not shooting for. Maybe maybe they're just going to go for high quality 4K. I don't know, but um, you know, with the announcement of the um, Canon R5, which we know is going to shoot 8K raw <laughs> video, um, it would be kind of weird to see the new Canon, a new Sony flagship, come in and really only do 4K video when there are already players in the market who do 6K and now 8K. Um, there are a couple of other uh, speculations in the, in the report of it as well, that we're going to see possibly the highest resolution EVF period, which is like 9.4 million dots, which is almost twice the resolution of the EVFs we have currently. Mm -hmm. And this could also possibly be the first Sony camera to have a fully articulating screen which could be huge for sure completely agree on that i mean i've been asking for that for a while i really hope they actually give it a full touch screen too yeah oh, absolutely goodness, please yeah it, you know i'm starting to think maybe the the a7s line might be the line that sony starts to try with some more innovations like the flip screen like maybe a, a fully uh, interactive menu system, that would be fantastic because for me personally, the menu systems in Sony cameras aren't the best. I would love to see a better implementation of a menu system, especially touch. Um, so maybe this is what we're going to start seeing now. Yeah, I think, well, so, you know, it's the S line has always been a very hybrid camera. So I'm also wondering if we're going to see maybe kind of what we've seen with competitors where you have a dedicated photo and a dedicated video mode where you have independent settings, right? You flip the switch and your settings for stills don't affect your settings for video. So, you know, you don't have to go and adjust everything, you know, uh, when you want to just go from shooting the photos to shooting video, all your settings are already there. So you're good to go. <clears throat> with that, you know, maybe we'll see instead of just shutter speeds when you switch to video mode, maybe they'll take a page out of Panasonic's book and put shutter angles in there. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure videographers would, you know, greatly appreciate that. Um, interesting. Maybe they'll thing. give it webcam feature too. Oh, geez. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, going back to going back to the camera though. Uh, so some interesting things happened recently in terms of. Uh, high resolution video in the high resolution video space. Um, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with the H.264 and H.265 video codecs. Uh, some cameras are already using H.265, which is called HEVC, high vision, uh, high efficiency mm -hmm. video codec. There's now officially a even more advanced one called DVC. Um, I believe it stands for variable video codec. Um, Oh, sorry, versatile. Yeah, ver uh, versatile video codec. So now it's H.266, which is more, even more advanced than what we have now. And supposedly, it's going to allow you to have the same file sizes uh, at 8K, you know, versus 4K. So basically, you're having the file size. So, it, you know, as we all know, like 8K files are huge. You, you know, you could, you could have a 128 gig card and I think that's barely an hour's worth of footage. So now, at least on the recording media side, you can fit that same amount of content in 8K on 128 or 256-gig card, you know? It sounds like there's also going to legitimately be a need for one terabyte cards as well, too. Like well, I There know are we have some them. already. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I honestly feel like this may be the first Sony camera to have SD and uh, XQD. One of these guys. CF Express. Yeah. yeah. It's not... Yeah. Yeah. Come on, XT4 focus. Nope. Anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, the XT4 grabbed on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. All go. right. So this versus this. Right. 
which yeah, is right. uh, also it's got the same form factor as CF Express, but no, yep. since it's Sony, it's probably gonna stick with Ace 2D since Sony owns the Ace 2D format. Whereas CF Express is kind of more open, even though you still have to license it. But anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, it's I think I would be shocked if Sony doesn't find a way to put 8K in there, knowing what Sony, uh, no, knowing what Canon is doing right now. Now, granted. A, there have been reports that the R5 gets really toasty really quickly when shooting for uh, shooting 4K or 8K. So, which know, that yeah. kind of leads into this new passive cooling system that Sony has apparently come up with for the uh, A7 yeah, III. As well. So, uh, does that mean that we're gonna get a like all aluminum body, or you know maybe the body itself it's somewhat of a heat sink? But you know mm. the problem with that is it's going to get warm and people will yeah. complain. But the thing is, that's how heat sinks work. It's supposed to draw the heat away from the internals. So you have to, you, so people may not understand it and freak out, but that's just, that's the law of thermodynamics. You know, you're drawing the heat out of the internal components. I'm sure Sony are probably designing this camera thinking that the, the majority of people who use this for video content creation are going to be using it in a cage or in a, you know, in a gimbal. Right, or which something, gives so. you a little bit of separation from the actual device already. So. Or it might be sort of like uh, the Sigma FP and the Panasonic. I certainly FP. hope it's nothing like the Sigma FP. No, no, no. Well, yes, <laughs> I agree with you. Yes. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> I, just, I just packed that thing up today. But anyway, yeah. So there are like these... <clears throat> vents sort of um and they keep the lcd screen a little bit further away so that it's easier for the heat to come out um maybe they could do a design change like that but i only see that being something on like the a7s series not like all the rest of course yeah it's it's gonna be interesting um i also feel like we're probably going to see the s inherit some of the the uh, cinema, like Mojo, that we've seen Sony put into their other consumer electronic devices, you know, like the Cine Alta stuff that they put into their Xperia phones, uh, with the A, like the A7S line being <clears throat> so popular with the video side of things, it, it just makes sense for them to kind of bundle that stuff into it. I also think that they'll probably do something similar to what Panasonic is doing with the, uh, I think it's the GF100. Um, where the microphones sort of like track where something is coming and it gives higher emphasis on the sound there versus anything else. Um, I don't know. I, I think they might do that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, yeah, and I mean, also just bringing things back towards the photo side, uh, you know. It shoots the, photos? The, <laughs> well, the, the A7S II was a phenomenal camera in low light um so it really opens up some creative possibilities you know uh, depending on the type of like shooting you like to do if you like to do like ambient stuff at night or you know for people that are into urbex um, like urban exploration mm -hmm. that could be pretty cool too instead of just always having to set set up a tripod you could conceivably hand like handhold a shot Yes, but they need to find a way to retain the details because <clears throat> above like 6400 ISO, everything just looked like a painting. Yeah, there's that, so. Yeah, I remember sitting there and them like for the original A7S being like, oh yeah, you can go all the way up to these higher ISOs and you'll still get usable images. And I'm like, yeah, but like there's no detail. Like what's going on? And then when I did the S2, it was the same thing. And I was like, wait, what's going on here? But um, what I also found was really weird was with the A7S II, you couldn't really get a whole lot of details from the highlights. Um, so maybe they'll do something. Uh, first off, I hope they give a higher megapixel sensor. Like, yeah. I think that it needs, like, at least 24. Um, how, long is, how long has it been since the A7S II came out? Was it 2017, I believe? Yeah, I think so. So we've had, I mean, we've had what? two or three new iterations of image processes since then. Yeah. I, that that also, would surely help. Uh, I have a feeling we might see 
see it get the global shutter that we've seen Sony release within the past couple of years. You know, uh, I th- that would definitely that would, be a that would definitely be a killer feature that would make it stand yeah. out from from say yeah, Panasonic S one hundred or the R five. You know, you also don't have to worry about rolling shutters, so yeah, that's huge. You know, it's, that's huge for both stills and and motion. You know, so yeah, it's. I think we're. I think you know, just given how uncharacteristically long the product cycle has been, with the uh, the S line, they have to come out guns blazing. So especially now that we've seen what you know the boys over at Canon or priming for. Yeah, there's definitely going to have to be some sort of wow factor with it, and I think there probably will be because. You know, honestly, it's going to be so disappointing if it's just another incremental update with a new body and a flashy EVF. <laughs> I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, I, 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 mean, doubt, I doubt it. It's going to be pretty revolutionary, I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like Nikon, for example, the Z6, like shooting Cinema Raw and then Panasonic doing it. And, you know, everything that the Canon R5 has. Um, Sony's probably just like biding their time, you know? Yeah, I could definitely see that for sure. Yeah. 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 I, I, I wouldn't put too much stock though in it looking drastically different from the rest of the A seven line. Supposedly it looks identical to the A seven R four. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna hint at. Is it's gonna look like my, uh, the R four or the A nine two, you know. Mm-hmm. Same grip and same everything. Um, generationally, technically, even though we are in like the fourth gen for this A7 series, I don't think they're gonna like skip the three and say, "Oh, here's A7S4." Um, I doubt it. Uh, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. I think the body itself, at least in shape, it's gonna look identical. But maybe they're doing something different to handle the cooling. And As I say, perhaps have to be a bit thicker with the passive heat sink and. Ooh, yeah, and you know, I really hope we got like a fully articulating, uh, fully touch capable screen. Yeah. Apparently, like a while ago, they were going to announce it. I think it was like at the last photo Kina or something, and then they had a problem with the heat sink, so they were like, No, we're not going to do it yet. Yeah, that was a rumor, and then also the pandemic happened, so everything got <laughs> pushed back. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, I, I sort of feel like the pandemic would have been like the perfect time to actually announce it because of the fact that, well, first off, we're still in the pandemic. Let's make it very clear. Mm-hmm. Um, at least America is. Uh, don't get me started on that. But, um, you know, a lot of people are still at home and they're recording stuff at home. Um, they announced the ZV1. I, mm-hmm. I really don't understand why they didn't announce... The A7S3. Well, one's a thousand dollars, and this one is probably going to be at least thirty-five hundred. Uh, and I would, that's me being conservative. I, yeah. I would say it's going to be like A92 money. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's going to go that high, only because there's still that separation between the A9 series and A7 series. The A7 series has never broken past thirty-five hundred. I'd be shocked. Yeah, but it still doesn't mean that like people won't sit there and buy it. Like if obviously, I, I think the pros will go for it first. Mm-hmm. But you you have to be able to justify that, you know, that ROI. You know. But like, pros what are you are getting? Like that. Okay, that- no, you're right. You're right about that. I was gonna say you have to be able to justify it. Pros might be able to. Um, I mean, it's a tax write off anyway. Um, even though like they're only now starting to go back to work in some ways. Um. I still think they would have. Like, if they announced it and then they're saying, like, uh, this will be coming in a couple months. Uh, you can put your pre-orders in maybe next month or something like that. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling if we see it announced, let's say, in, uh, like, late August, right? The earliest I can see it being announced late August. This is probably going to be a holiday thing. You know, I, I don't see it shipping any time before October. So, I don't know. I, I, I kind of think they might. They might just to try and nip the Canon R5 in the bud. They might try and get it out to market. Could well, be. here's the thing. They it all try to wait until Photo Plus. And, I'm, like, there is no well, Photo Plus this year, right? 
there is apparently. Oh jeez, why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I've yeah, I don't know. you might have blocked it out, but yeah, I've gotten at least like two dozen emails. From them. <laughs> Wait, we're getting emails about Photo Plus? Yeah. Oh, thank coming. God, my spam filter is so strong. <sighs> it's sometimes a little too strong, but yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, but like a live show, like at Javits. As far as I know, it, it, isn't it still like set up as a hospital? That's what I thought. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I haven't been to Manhattan, and when's the last time we went to Manhattan? Like three months ago, two months ago. I've been, so I don't, know, I don't know about you. Oh, okay. No, I haven't been in a while. Um, but yeah, no, like I, I, I don't know if I want to go to that show. Also, Sony might not might do their own thing again. You know, I think going forward, they definitely are seeing how popular their own event was, and you know the fact that you're able to completely control your messaging and engage with the audience. The people that were there predominantly were either already in the Sony ecosystem or they were interested in switching. Yeah. So, you know, you're not competing with other people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, was, uh, it was definitely an experiment. I think for them, it was a success. Plus, uh, Kando got moved and it's online only now, right? Yeah. I saw it's that. Not like a real Kando, but yeah. So it's a fake condo. Well, you you lose kind of the camaraderie and the like actual creating thing. It's more like an online seminar thing, from what I understand. Yeah, no, that's true. No good. I mean, it's still allowing creatives to connect. So, I mean, I'm okay losing all the drunk people on Garf Garts like driving crazy. I'm all right with that. Oh, oh on, on all those. Uh, all those uh, bikes. Oh, geez, those are the worst. And then guys like falling into the pool because they had too much to drink. I'm all right with that. Uh, right. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right losing that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, that, was, that was an interesting evening. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, though, wrapping up thoughts. Um, one feature, if you guys had to pick one feature that you really, really want for photographers, what would it be? Paul, what would it be? For photographers? Yeah a higher resolution sensor that it's also more light sensitive okay brett what would you want i'm ready to see sony with a fully articulating screen i think that has to come and then it has to fold out down into their other cameras too Ooh, geez I, I was well, gonna I say mean, that. that's more of a video feature but yeah yeah, no. Yeah, but, you know, a fully articulating touchscreen would be amazing. I want multiple exposure modes so badly. Bring back the Play Memory Store. They're not going to do it. Or better yet, how about you give your, cons your consumers and your customers all those things for free built into the camera? Or that. Just make it accessible within the menu system. Yeah, but, yeah. like, they can, they can jack the price up, like, five or $700 more, and, like, people would still buy it. Uh, I don't know. Some some people may not, because not everyone uses those features. I mean, I okay. Mean, I, I, it, this is something I can see coming down the line. This is another discussion, but I can definitely see there being some sort of subscription service coming to cameras here pretty soon oh, too. God. Oh, jeez. They're they're already trying to talk about that with cars. Yes, cars. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally see, and I can totally see Sony doing it too. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, let, let's not let's not. That's man. a whole nother discussion. I mean, I could I could totally see <laughs> Fujifilm doing it with film simulations. A subscription? Yeah. Oh, just make it like make it a DLC. Like I'll pay for it. I'm not going to subscribe to use a freaking film sim. Get out of here. You would if it were Natura. See? I will see? Buy, see? I will see? Listen. Look what I did. Look what I did. Listen. Look what I, I did. Buy the film sim. <laughs> I'm not going to pay a subscription for it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, charge me I mean, so many people did it when they went to Adobe. Like, charge me 10, 15 bucks, whatever. But, like, I, what if, like, I want to be able to pick up a camera in, like, 10 years and the film sim still works? 
I'm like, oh, sorry, the server is offline. You can't use. Like, how are they even going to authenticate? Like, is, uh, are they gonna put a 5G radio into into my camera? I mean, if they're gonna do that, they would. They damn sure better have GPS capability, so I don't have to sync it to my phone first to pack GPS tag my photos. Yeah, that's a solid point. You know. All right, let's wrap up this segment. Uh, let's move on to the next one.